Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Tech. A uh, lot of things that I'm learning, as you can probably tell, this is this is very much a learning process for me. It's way deeper than I anticipated it being, and it's, it's interesting. Uh, we do have some repairs going, uh, but I've also noticed that if we look at one of our other mechs, uh, we've got some pieces missing. So on our Shadowhawk, if we go in here, I think we need to do a refit. So I'm gonna initiate that. So we need to replace the right torso, replace the right arm. Now these, I think these are dead. I think these pieces are are destroyed maybe. Um, and I can initiate a repair here. And if I confirm this, like if I go up to here, uh, where is it? Scrap destroyed components. I think that's what this is because these are destroyed. So let me just see if I scrap destroyed. Yeah. So I think those are toast. We're gonna repair the arms, and then uh, what what I would probably do is modify this in a way to be very similar to what was there before. So we put the medium laser on this one. We could do, for some reason I don't have um, LRM5 over here. So this must mean that these are not just unlimited amounts. I think this is like, if I put this on, it's gonna be too heavy. I think because our LRM5 got destroyed, she's gone. That's it, she's gone. Uh, which means I only have medium lasers to put on here. And uh, I can't put anything else on that left arm other than ammo. So, look, I'm not sure exactly if I'm doing it correctly, but I'm doing what I can try to figure out. This is going to take some time, though. As you can see, it's going to take 24 days. It's going to cost us a lot of money to do this. Um, so we're probably going to have to take out another mech on the oh, next contract. No. But uh, we need about 14 days anyways. So if I go and take a look at the available contracts here. We have one available, it's patrol. Okay, so we believe that there's a pirate lance operating on Belarif Belarifan within a region we control. All local government operations are at risk as long as this lance is allowed to move unimpeded. Patrol the area, find the enemy lance, eliminate it. Okay, looks like it's a pretty straightforward mission, like difficulty wise. Um, but uh, yeah, it's gonna take 12 days to get there. Now I guess on some contracts, we are not going to get uh, or we're gonna have to pay to travel there. Max pay here is 251,000, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, our current operating costs are pretty high. So this basically pays for our month. Now we can we can say we want more or less payment in terms of for salvage, which I think we put towards building additional mechs. Um, I think I will actually increase the payment here at the cost of salvage, only because we had a huge repair bill for that mech that had the sides blown off that we just repaired. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. However, because it's in 12 days, and again, this is just what I can figure out would be the best. And we have 14 days on this pilot. I think we're just going to advance time until that's at like 11 days. So now, then we take the contract. And again, I don't know if this really matters, but this is the way that I interpret it. We're going to take this contract because it's 12 days to travel there. Let's go a little bit more money, a little bit less salvage. Roger that, Commander. And uh, we'll head out that way. On on the path, these uh, pilots will be back. And the Shadowhawk's going to take forever. So I feel like this is the best way to go. And we'll just take out... I think we have five mechs right now. Two are light mechs, though. So it's not amazing, but uh, it's okay. All right, what's this? Shakedown. You're on the Leopard's Bridge with Sumire Yang and Darius uh, for the daily staff briefing. Darius says, we received three messages from the banks. Loan sharks, Sumire cuts in. From the people who are financing us, Darius continues. They're considering rewriting the terms of our loan so it'll be easier to seize this ship if we miss a payment. As usual, they're only doing this because they believe we can't fight it in court. Sweet talk, ignore or educate. Never ignore banks. Let's sweet talk the bank. I'll talk to them, you say, and the meeting moves on after you record a response. In it, you explain with much gravitas to the bank that you selected each of them for their prestige and reliability. You remind them of your impeccable payment history. You conclude by expressing your desire for a long and fruitful financial relationship with them, hinting that you might seek additional loans when your current ones are paid in full. A few days later, the banks contact you to say their previous messages were sent in error, typical, and should be ignored. Your company has gained the following tags, loan status fair. Company's credit is currently rated as fair by the banks financing the Leopard, which keeps them from sending bounty hunters after you. Nice. All right, let's uh, let's keep cruising. We have six days till we're there. Both pilots are going to be back.
And, uh, yeah, feel free if you guys have additional advice, like, hit me up. There's- this is- there's a lot going on, and I'm sure people reading the comments benefit from it just as much as I do. Um, because some of you guys seem to know a lot about this universe and this game. So, um, it's helpful. If it, it very much is. Okay. We've arrived at Bellarefin and are ready to deploy. Proceed to the mission. Uh, one thing people were mentioning, if I take a look at the mech bays, I should make sure that we have ammo uh, for everything. Lasers, we don't need ammo. AC2, do we need, see, like, AC2 ammo? I have AC2 ammo here. So, fine. That seems good, and we're maxed out. So this is, I think that's good. That's what I want to be looking for, to make sure we have the ammo to go with the necessary ballistics. Uh, we've got the particle cannon. Doesn't require ammo, I don't think. Uh, laser, fine. Laser, fine. Okay, cool. We'll check out the spider. I think it's just lasers on the light mechs. Uh, yeah, a couple of lasers here. Uh, I don't know if it matters where you equip these. Like, it seems like some of them you can equip in multiple spots. Uh, yeah, don't save anything that I just did there. And then lastly, we've got the locust. And if we take a look at the locust, we've got a uh, minigun. Or machine gun, sorry. And we have machine gun ammo. So we have machine guns on both sides, and then we have the ammo in the middle. And it's maxed out. The other thing that, I, that I've that uh, i read in some of the tutorial stuff is that we want to always make sure that our tons is basically maxed out. There's no point in taking out a mech that's, like, under um, underweight, you know. So let's launch this contract. Let's give her. Okay. So we don't have the Shadowhawk. That's fine. So we're going to take the Blackjack who's going to pretty much be the tank. Um, take the Vindicator. Both of these guys are, like, very similar. Spider and Locust. We do have the guns on this one and a bit more armor. The spider's kind of more of, like, just scouting for us. Um, I don't have any, like... I do have some long-range missiles here. So if we can get the scout to see these enemies, and then uh, we can use long-range missiles from a distance as well. So I'm going to I'm going to pile it up. I think how it was before. I think she was there. Decker was in the spider. And we have Behemoth um who was piloting the uh the big one that's now in repair, the Shadowhawk. But we have Medusa as well, another pilot. So I think we'll actually go here and try this. I think that works. Let's give her. See what happens. I think ideally, all of that stuff that I just did, I'll try to do, like, um, at the end of episodes. So that when we start the next one, we basically would pick up, like, right from here. You know, it's like, here's the objective. We believe there's a pirate lance operating there. Patrol the area, find the enemy lance, and eliminate it. It's a straightforward battle commander. Finding a military lance in a backwater like this should be no challenge at all. Ah, let's, let's hope so. Command interface initiated. I definitely see the value of, like, reducing our damage because it's very costly to make those repairs and that like those are huge setbacks these guys are amateurs get eyes on them and take them out all right now here's hoping that we don't have some type of like ambush again right all right let's get into the trees with both of you guys and then we do have some high ground Up there is fine for now. On my way. Okay. Oh, and thanks for clarifying. DFA means death from above. Um, but people were explaining it's a bit risky to use because you can damage yourself as well. Uh, let's do this, actually. So we have that available lane. Because she has the, uh, long-range missiles... Here we go. We might be able to hit from a bit of a further distance if when we get vision. So maybe even, like, over top of this obstacle, if we're able to scout here. 
We'll stay in the trees on this approach. Coordinates received. I also find it interesting that you... When you go to a, a location, you can't do, like, a full turn. Like, I turn... I turned Medusa as far as I possibly could this way, but... Borders? Alright, we will have eyes on here. Exposed, but eyes on. on so let's way. give her. And we'll see what kind of Time enemy we're dealing money. with. Okay, we're in rough terrain. Cool. Unit move through rough terrain. It will take 150 stability damage from all attacks until its next activation. Okay. So this guy, um, a bunch of armor, actually. A bunch of armor, but very little structure. So let's just, we'll do what we can here. Copy that. All right. Bit puny, but what am I, what do I expect? What do you need? I'm coming in. Uh, these are all rough terrain. This is going through rough terrain. I wonder, do we still have that same impact? I think so. It looks like it would still impact us. Spotted. Yeah, okay. So when they move through the rough terrain, that happens. That's cool. I got there. So minigun, we need to be up close. Attacking from position. Okay. Crushed. That one's gone. If these are all like this, looks like there's four potentially. If they're all like this, uh, then he wasn't lying. Pretty straightforward mission. And for what seems like a decent amount of cash as well. It's like the most awkward run. Uh, yeah, just brace. If this guy moves in vision, be interested to see if we can missile over top here. All right. Waiting on you, Commander. Yeah, we can. Beautiful. So, I've mentioned a couple times where I can, like, these light, um, infantry units. I don't really see, like, how they're gonna be that helpful, but from, like, this scouting perspective, that's what makes them really good. Right, being able to let our guys just do damage from another section while they run around. Receiving you. Alright, let me, uh... Let me get in here. We can actually move even further. Okay. Eyes on. We've got potential 50 damage, depending on what spot we hit. So the front is what we would likely hit from here, or maybe the front right. Let's see how you like this. So it looks like front right. We can check it when we go with Medusa Just here. But I think we'll probably want to stay. I guess we always want to be building up evasion though, right? At least if I go here. I'll kind of do like this. So that we don't have total flank central on us. And the one thing I want to check is I'd like to look at the armor here. Yeah, okay, so it was the right side. See, like, that's so cool. Now that we're attacking from the left, we have to chunk through all that armor again, which I'm not thrilled about. So I think what I'll do is try and blast off some armor here. And it looks like this red stuff is showing me the potential spots where I'm going to hit. More likely in this area, less likely on this side. Very cool. I think that's, that's what I'm interpreting, so if you guys see it differently, let me know. But uh, that little light bulb moment could actually be huge for me. Oh boy. Whoo! 
We don't even know what kind of vehicle that is. All right. It's probably not very, like, for so many of you that have seen or you know this, like, style of game, you're like, this is nothing. Just go in there and fire all your stuff. But for me, it's about understanding the systems and understanding, like, why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's what I really need, you know? Okay, these are all, like, huge chances to hit. He's got, like, no damage left in the front. I'm not too worried about heat or very little armor left in the front. I think this crushes him. Yeah, okay. That little revelation there about where we're shooting, that's super helpful for me. It's, it's, it's helped to solidify why we're doing the damage that we're doing. Like some of those situations that I ran into on the last mission. Um, that I couldn't quite understand. I think this is like a direct eyesight line, right? Yeah, you see the little red eye there? We saw that in one of the tutorials. So I'm going to stay out of vision, actually. On my way. And we'll take the lob shot here. We're hitting in front. Still pretty armored up, but uh, not bad. Potentially 20 damage. All right. Thank God they take it easy on me so I can kind of get a, some... A semblance of understanding of what I'm doing. <laughs> Holding. All right, Decker. What's up, boss? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You could fire from here, but we're firing on the back now, which I don't love. Um, I really love the positional aspect of this. It's really cool. I'm not going to be able to fire on him from the front, but I think. Can we, can any of the mechs melee? Yeah, I think I have to be on move. Yeah, here we go. Because we do double damage against vehicles, right? I think anybody, any of them can melee. Look at this. Just step on it. <laughs> so sick. That's actually awesome. Reporting that is one so less cool, vehicle. man. Reporting one less vehicle. Damn right. Yep. Damn right. Um, okay, I don't, I don't love this spot, to be honest. He sees me, I can't see him. I will, however, go into the trees. Move order received. He's probably going to take a shot at Odd in the Blackjack, if I had to guess. He might move up, that would be nice too. Let's brace here. What can I do for you? I think I'm gonna need to pull you over here. Get eyes on. One thing that I'd like to know is because of the different range, we've got like our short range, our medium range, and then our very long range. Um, is if if there's a visual to show me which one I can potentially hit with, I'm guessing that because this is the furthest back that I still have eyesight, uh, that's where the the PPC is going to be best. So yeah, and the and the LRM, so beautiful. We're hitting at the side, which isn't outstanding, but it's already weakened. That's a whiff. But. If I can get a visual here, that side should be exposed. And then with the blackjack, we just hammer into it. Right? Yeah, see how this is, like, basically gone? This should destroy him. Heat-wise, again, I think we're still... I could turn off the, the lasers if I really want to get picky here. But we still need to do, like, 100 damage if these all hit. Um, here, let's do this. All weapons committed. Okay, never mind. So, the one thing I still might be lacking understanding on is the, um... Enemy unit destroyed. Do I need to do enough structure damage to the whole total? 
like the, when you see the enemy and it's like this is how much structure damage or structure they have do I need to chew through all of that or just the structure for the side or for the part of it that I'm hitting I think I need to do all of that um, but certainly chewing off the chunks of armor is significant because then we can do the actual structure damage Right? So that was, that was massive for us. That's great. Okay, cool. And it's a decent payout. Cool. Uh, uninjured, uninjured, uninjured. No structure damage. Beautiful. That's what we need. Now, potential salvage. Okay. Okay. So... After choosing priority items, you will receive up to three additional pieces of salvage. All right. These LRM tens are very heavy. Um, I think I'll grab another, maybe short range missiles. I can only choose one right now. Maybe we can eventually unlock more. Or, oh, that's what the salvage agreement means. Gotcha. Okay, so if we were to move the, that bar, remember when we were uh, negotiating and we chose to take more money, if we would have moved the bar more to the right, we could then pick the priority ones. Otherwise, we pick this and then we get three additional, up to three additional randoms, I think. Yeah, cool. Okay, that's cool. Sometimes withdrawing from mission is your best option. Or is the best thing for your bottom line. Alright. That's good advice. Okay, so obviously pretty straightforward mission. Um, we kind of needed that. I did, at least. We're going to need to do some mech repairs before our next contract boss. Can't go into combat like this. Seeming the mech bay when you're ready. Alright. Nice up? to see you down here in the hole. Anything I can do? No, I don't. I think. I don't think so. Thanks, Yang. So, like, these guys should all be good, right? Armor's back. He said we need to do repairs. He could be referring to this. Whatever. Um, so I think that's okay. I think we're actually good, even though he said we need to come here. I think we're fine. Now let's go look at the next set of contracts. All right. A couple of things that we have here. Um... Is there a way to tell what is like a main story contract and what is not? Terrorist convoy, key personnel. This includes travel at 17 days to Detroit. Terrorist strikes against our facilities have increased and our intel says the local pirate organization is bankrolling the terrorists and providing logistical support in the form of small arms, explosives, and medical supplies. The smell's political, and that makes me nervous. It suggests we go in, take care of the convoy, and get out again without too many questions. There's a bonus from the locals if we clean up all the enemy forces, but that's up to you. Oh, cool. And then here, we have an opportunity to win a key figure in the pirate hierarchy of this system, which will leave their organization in chaos and ensure safety for Canopian operations. The target will be relatively unguarded and vulnerable, and we'd like you to strike in this window of opportunity. Sounds like we'll be hitting a middle manager. Not much glory, but it pays. The target won't be a lone commander, and there's a bonus if we clean up the escorting units. Still, if things get too hot, we can always hit and run. So this one's a little bit more. Um, the max salvage potential here is pretty good. And it looks like this one's in the desert, which is, I think, where we are. And this one, we'd have to travel 17 days. So if we do this, maybe we don't have to travel at all. Oh, look. Okay, so previously when I was negotiating... Oh, I see. It does knock it down, but then you can... I see. You can bring it back up. But there's limits, and it'll force you out. So I think what this is, is on the left, this is priority, the ones that we pick. And then we would get up to five additional. Um, whereas here, it's like zero priority, and we get two if we want more money. I think getting at least one priority seems pretty good right now for me. So I think we just take this, right? Um, I think this is what we do. Yeah, and then we would just go out and just deploy. 
right? This thing is still being, uh, still being rebuilt. But I think that's like the vibe of the, of, um, taking on the contracts and, and going out there and fighting. That one, very straightforward. I imagine these are going to pick up rapidly at some point. Um, if you guys know how to tell if it's like a main one or a side one, that would be cool. The other thing that I might have to consider, normal activity. I think if I talk to her, yeah, questions about navigation. Um, let me ask her this and see if there's some like tutorial based stuff. Here we go. How do you get from system to system? Short answer is that you pick a destination on the star map. I make it happen. Interstellar top travel takes time, sometimes weeks, and it costs us sea bills for fuel and passage. But it's the only way an outfit like ours to survive out here. We go where the work is. Okay. Do we always have to pay? This is probably stipulated in the contracts. Yeah, if you check the contracts list in the command center, you'll often find employers posting travel contracts. This is how employers attract mercenaries to their system by paying the outfit's travel expenses. Cool. Um... I don't know if we need to know... Okay, let's figure this out. Long answer is two types of space travel. Drop ships like ours and jump ships. Drop ships use FTL. Um, travel to and from the jump point takes the most of our travel time, sometimes weeks. Kind of already heard that. Jump ships, on the other hand, like ferries. They just sit at the jump point waiting for folks to latch on to us at the docking collar. Cool. Um, let's go back here. What intel can we get before we go? Enough to make a reasonably informed choice, I think. The star map makes political boundaries clear, so you know whose space we're entering. I pre-programmed the star map to lock out travel systems designated as no-fly zones. We're looking for work, not an interstellar incident. Now, uh, Harebrain Schemes has said it's probably ideal to do, like, one side mission and one main mission in each of the different uh, areas. Um, otherwise, in the early game, we might see repeats of some of the side contracts. So, uh, that's why I need to figure out which ones are main and which ones are not. Uh, but I can probably figure, if you guys aren't sure, I could probably dive into that and figure it out somehow. Beyond political boundaries, the nav system will highlight political factions active in the system. This should give you a good idea of who's hiring. It's probably a good idea to check your reputation with the local factions before ordering a long voyage. It's gotta be more intel than just politics, no? There is. As you select systems on the star map, you'll see a list of the attributes the MercNet database associates with them. Attributes like black market or poor are clues to local store contents. The type of mercs we'll find in hiring halls, contracts we may be offered, and potential mission environments. If you hover over an attribute, your star map will display a longer description for you. Cool. Um, okay, let's just take a look at this then. Star map confuses me sometimes. Why does it take longer to get to one place than another when the systems appear the same distance? <laughs> it's a question I would ask. Yeah, that bothered me too before I joined the Academy. In real life, space travel is a lot different from what we see in those old adventure hollow vids Darius makes us watch. Uh, for starters, some systems are bigger than others, so it takes longer to travel from the heliopause to the other destination. Charging a jump ship uh, takes around five days, so you've got to factor in the number of jumps required to reach a given location. You have to factor in the density of the stars we travel past. Larger stars have a greater gravity field, so the larger the star, the longer it takes to pass. Okay, and what can we do while we're orbiting in system? Uh, beyond negotiating a contract, most inhabited systems maintain a hiring hall where we can recruit new mech warriors. Be sure to take a look. You never know what kind of talent you're going to find. Most systems also have merchants who can buy and sell hardware, such as weapons, equipment, and mech parts. Sometimes even fully operational battle mechs, too. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's take a look at the star map. So, we are in Bellerophon. Planetary government. Travel contract. See, like... Is this... It, this just means there's a contract available there. We'd have to go there to get it. So if we don't have others, then that's what we would do. I guess. And these are different systems. Alloway. Your crew in. Detroit. So maybe we do the local ones. Maybe the exclamation is a main. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, you guys, if you, if you have info for me, that would be amazing. But I'll wrap it up here. And then the next time we'll come back, we'll take another contract and we'll start cruising. And hopefully I start to get the vibe of how things are supposed to roll. And we'll be good to go. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, appreciate all the advice as always. And uh, hopefully you're having fun. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.